Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another tutorial in Matlux FX. In this episode, we are going to check out the latest Mocha Pro version and also its camera solve updates. I'll be honest here, I have tried camera solving inside Mocha Pro years ago and it was not that great. But with the latest update, things look very promising. So in this tutorial, I will break down everything you need to know to use the camera solver inside Mocha Pro. And I'm sure this is going to save you a lot of time and level up in your work. If you're ready, let's hop in. I have opened Mocha Pro 2025 here. You can see that here it's Mocha Pro 2025. Now the next step is to create a new project. So file new project. I'm going to choose the plate. These days every software fills up all the metadata properly. But I always suggest to have a look at all the settings which it automatically got filled. In my case frame rate, pixel aspect ratio. Maybe you can type a name for your project as well. Uh, in my case I'm super happy with whatever it is here right now. And I'm going to click on OK. OK so I already have a file with the same naming. So I'm going to replace that here. I'm sure you might have already worked inside Mocha. And this is the workspace which you always see. This is the footage which I'm going to explore today. Basically I'm just going to explore camera tracking inside Mocha. The beauty of camera tracking is that if we have a camera for this shot, every other work is going to be pretty easy. For example, if we want to roto something or if you want to remove anything from the shot, in that case also it is very helpful. Uh, also, if you are doing some compositing works, cameras can be super handy. If you go inside here, workplace classic, this is the classic look of Mocha Pro. And if you go inside essential, if you want to get a basic planner track, this UI is pretty much needed. In my case, I'm going to explore camera solve. So the shortcut for that is control 2 you have a new window here it's called 3d objects where you can see all your data is going to be saved you can see the solve camera all the features if you're importing some asset you can see that as well here so that's all about this window and this is pretty much the usual stuff inside here you can see this is an updated menu that means as i just mentioned there was this option before as well but it was not that great i guess behind this they are using the synthesize algorithms but yeah it's pretty straightforward I'm going to explain all the settings right now. From there, we can hop into tracking this shot. All right, so we are inside camera solve tab and the first option is to choose the clip or footage for tracking. Right now, it's already been imported. In my case, it's video April and you can import more footages into this workspace. Next, we have pre-processing tab. If you click on that, it opens up few properties here. Most of these properties are filter controls. That means you can adjust blur, sharpen, contrast, gamma. Also, you can denoise and, and even you can apply high pass filter. There is also an option called remove flicker. If you have flicker, or color changes in your footage try using this one it might help this is just like a global settings if the viewer will be automatically updated if you click on this option a value of 5 will look something like this and yeah in this case i'm gonna keep everything as default or if you made so much alterations here you can simply click on reset option i'm gonna close this pop-up up next we have the camera parameters that means we have a button called solve which obviously solves the camera i'm gonna do that later also we have a button for clear solve if you are not satisfied with the current camera solve and if you want to delete everything which got created inside 3d objects you can simply delete everything by clicking on clear solve button next we can type in the focal length of the camera which is used to shoot this footage in my case it's unknown so i can simply continue by clicking on unknown button here if you are aware of the focal length you can uncheck this option and type in the value here keeping this as unknown for now and also if you have information about film back size that means sensor size of the camera you can type in that as well in my case i'm not aware of this because i downloaded this footage from pexels.com so i'm gonna keep this as default next we have an option for choosing the type of camera motion in our shot so if you go inside these properties we have three options here the first one is normal motion this is the most common used camera movement for tracking next we have crash pan this can be considered as fast panning shots next we have low detail you can choose this option if your footage has green screen as background or less detailed backgrounds or a hazy environment next we have an option for zoom lens if the lens in your camera is zooming you can turn on this option if your camera is on a stationary tripod you can turn this option
option example of this kind are ptc shots also there is an option called corners if your footage has corners such as buildings windows bricks or very detailed texture lines you can try turning this option on and track next we have few options for features first one is use auto features this is to tell mocha that you have to generate features for this tracking that means if you turn this option off mocha won't generate features in this shot in that case we might need to manually do planner tracks and use that as tracking features but in most cases we will turn on this option next we have minimum trackers per frame this is the number of features mocha tries to generate in every single frame next we have max tracker count this is the total number of features mocha will generate throughout the entire work range next we have option called add more trackers that means we can ask mocha to add more trackers in between the existing features and that will definitely make the point clouds even more denser next we have small blip size and big blip size blips are the texture or pattern the software uses for feature tracking and this is the size of the smallest feature which mocha will search for and this will be the biggest blip size that's all about features properties next we have a button called solve data which is kind of hidden right now or disabled i can simply click on solve button and try to solve this camera you can see it's blipping solving it throwed an error that means the tracker was not that great obviously we are going to generate a camera for sure but with all the default properties i'm getting an error value of 12.93 i'm gonna close this option also you can see this is the average error per frame so which is pretty bad it's 12.93 that means this time the camera solve is failed to generate a good camera for this shot this is option which you can type in the frame number which you want to generate uv coordinates for and also we have an option for exporting camera data which we will explore later so that's all about the properties inside camera solve tab cool so i'm gonna click on clear solve to delete the previous solve and i'm gonna try adjusting few properties here to get a better result this time inside motion type i'm gonna keep normal motion and obviously my camera don't have any zoom lens also it's not on tripod i'm not gonna turn on this option as well so let's keep the minimum trackers per frame as maybe 100 and uh, this one as 800 uh, rest of the settings as default and let's try to solve again cool so you can see the result is way better than 12.93 we can make it even better by adjusting these values let's do a playback and see how it looks like yeah so it's that easy to get camera solve done inside mocha pro you just need to click on this button now as we did the camera solve we have kind of a 3d scene of this footage ready for us to explore so how to navigate into the 3d view it's quite simple if you're using the latest version of mocha here we have few icons if you click again on this icon called 3d it just turns off this whole 3d object data i'm gonna turn this on if you click and hold you can shuffle into different views for example the current view is called camera view and the shortcut is f2 if you want to go into the perspective view it's f3 like that we have front top bottom left right i'm gonna click on perspective now we have the perspective of 3d scene which got generated i'm gonna click alt and left mouse button just drag to rotate in the viewer also you can press middle mouse button to and also you can hold alt and right click to dolly in and out you can scroll middle mouse button for the same as well this is how we navigate through the 3d scene you can right click here reset camera and it just takes us to the default view so i'm gonna go back to the 3d view here i'm gonna give you a rough glimpse about what these icons are so this one is show or hide the 3d ground plane that means the grid which we have in the viewer i can turn that on and off also we can show or hide the background footage as well we have an option to turn off the 3d mesh textures as well now if you go into the 3d objects properties we have few options here this is the overall transform for the entire scene adjusting any values for this affects the whole scene now we have the generated camera as cameras if you have any 2d tracks such as planner track or power mesh you can find those layers inside here these are the auto features which got generated by solving this camera if you have any assets to import it will go under this folder as well so this is all about 3d objects properties here we have different filter settings you can change color you, you can expand collapse you can do all those sort of things using these icons suppose your 3d object window looks like this 
and you want to collapse every single folders you can do that by right clicking over here collapse all or you can choose selected as well next we have 3d object properties for example if i'm clicking on this particular feature point i have the translate values here i always keep the uniform scale as turned on next we have an option to import assets i'm going to show how to do that later next we have align panel in this case i'm going to choose this point as my center of the scene that means 0 0 0 i just selected that point and click on make origin there we go now wherever that point is the value is 0 0 0 that means that is the origin of the scene also if i choose few points here maybe i will just go back to the perspective view uh, make sure it's on the same plane uh, it looks like it's on the same plane i'm gonna click on align to ground just watch the screen when i click on this button now you can see the grid is set according to those few points we selected this helps us to evaluate the scene even better because we have a ground here and we set the ground plane according to that so yeah this is all about the properties which you see here if you want to scale up this scene even more precisely you can use this option called measure distance tool or you can consider this as a tape for measuring the distance you can see there's an option where you can type in a value right now it's disabled that is why because we have to select two points in this scene and we have to type in the value of measurement between those two points over here the unit mentioned here is meters that means if you know the distance between two points from this solve you can select those two points and type in the value over here i'm gonna select two points i don't have exact measurement of this scene so i'm gonna select two points maybe this one and this one i'm gonna do a playback and see if it's on the same plane so it looks like it is on the same plane i guess the value i'm going to type in here is right now 40 meters it is showing but i'm gonna type in maybe five meter as I typed in, you can see the scale of the scene is also adjusted. You won't be seeing any major changes in the 3D scene because it's the same camera also, but you can see the scale has been adjusted according to that value. In most shots, we always have to do some roto for the occlusion objects or characters which is moving in front of the object which we need to track. In this case, I'm doing camera sol that makes it more important to mask out all the moving objects. In my shot, it is this character. In the previous versions of Mocha Pro, we need to mask this character manually by doing rotoscopy, which is obviously a lot of effort and time consuming as well. In the latest version, we have all the machine learning tools available to make our work easy. I'm gonna give you a glimpse of how it works and how we can make use of that for our camera solving first thing you have to do is go into matte tab and right now everything is kind of disabled we just need to go over here add mask ml to layer i saw the term ben mentioned in the official tutorial was object brush and next you don't have to draw a spline just come into a frame where i can see the character more clearly let's suppose this is that frame i'm gonna click on her face that just generates a map for her face one more click on her dress maybe one more click over here yes that's it we have a mat for the character unfortunately some other objects also got selected in the background we can remove that by simply right click on my mouse over here that's it that just got deselected and we have a mat for the character precisely precisely in the sense not with edges but at least it is covering all the area where i need now if you try to play back you can see it is not great it's just for one single frame how to animate this mask you don't have to do anything manually that is also can be done using ai select the pick tool right after that you can see there is a spline which is drawn around the character where that mat got generated if you do play back you can see it is still on that specific frame over here select this option generate object map what's that going to do is very simple it will enable this option so i'm going to click on render that specific frame as i render that frame you can see there is a yellow line i'm going to zoom in and show you it's not exactly where our spline is but it's almost there again if i do a playback you can see it's still on that specific frame that means we have to render the whole work range so i'm going to click on render forward or you can render single frames as well let's click on this button backward as well now if you do playback you can see we have a mat for that character throughout the work range it's not that precise but at least i have a rough garbage mat let's suppose if i have to add a keyframe over here as well i can do that just go over here hold on to this icon you can select object brush with plus icon i'm gonna click again so everything is selected right now and let's try rendering on that frame now select the pick tool you can see we have a new spline on this specific frame and also you can see the yellow lines which we had before is now dotted lines that means we have to render it again so i'm gonna do that again now we have a much more better mat uh, now i'm gonna render it again 
If you want to fine tune more, you can do that as well. But I'm quite happy with this result. I want to show you one more option. It's not precisely covering the edges of the character. And I don't want to be that exact with the edges. I literally want a garbage mat around the characters. It's very easy to do that as well. If you go over here inside the mat properties, you can see there is an option called dilate mat. Let's type in a value of maybe 15. If you turn on this option, you can see all the updates live on the viewer whenever you adjust this property. So in this case, I'm going to render and see if it works. There we go. Now we have a garbage mat around the character. Obviously we need to render it again. So I'm going to do that. If you want like the value to be 10, you can type in that here. As you turn on this option, you can see that changes right away. Now we have a value of 10 as dilate and let's render that again. By this way, now we have a garbage mat, which we can use for our camera solve. Let's go into the camera solve. You can see we have a mat assisted layer by noticing this icon over here besides the layer name. Click on this option. Let's do camera solve again and see what the result looks like. It's the same properties which I used before. So click on solve. So the camera was not solving properly. So I reduced the min trackers frame from 100 to 15. With that number itself, I got a better tracking result after masking the character, which is moving all over the shot. Now, the only thing which I I have to do is set the ground plane as well as the origin which I can do very easily. This looks really fantastic to me. Alright, now let's see how we can make use of planner track and also in some cases power mesh as well inside camera solve. So I'm gonna draw a spline over here for the BG window. Important thing is to keep the surface wherever you need those corners to be and I'm gonna keep it like this. Let's rename the layer first. So this is BG window and I'm gonna place this layer in the bottom. Now if you check the mat here you can see the air mask is definitely helping to to make an occlusion layer. I'm gonna turn off this option. Maybe keep the perspective on and let's do a planner track. It's not 100% accurate because you can see the edge is sliding a little bit over here but that's okay for this tutorial. Now I have a BG window layer and woman mat. So if you go into the camera solve tab, you won't see any difference and you can't see the planner track as well. Uh, but if you go inside layer, you can see there's new layer called BG window and inside there, we are supposed to have that planner tracking layer. For making it visible, the only option is to do the camera solve. So I'm going to click on solve. There we go. We have a surface where we need. If you go into the 3D view, you can use the shortcut as well. You can see the layer is pretty much intact there but now you can see the grid placement is completely messed up so for that what we can do is we can select few points and click on align to ground here you can see the grid is not matching perfectly we can uh, manually do that select the scene transform and uh, let's go into the left view and let's move the scene a little bit here now let's go into the camera view it's way better right now Maybe this point as my origin. The grid is placed almost perfectly. We can even fine tune this a little more. Select the scene transform layer and try to rotate this. Okay, so I have adjusted that a little more and right now you can see it's pretty much lining up with the stairs. So yeah, now we can export this into any other 3D applications and proceed with whatever we have to do on this shot. Now, if you want to check your track even more precisely and you have some 3D mesh already there in your pipeline, you can simply import that as USD format into your Mocha Camera Solve workspace. Just go into File, Import, USD 3D Object. This is the USD file which I'm going to import and check. Click on Open. There we go. It just got imported. And if you do playback, you can see it's a model of a flower pot. Right now, it doesn't look like it stays on the ground. So I'm going to adjust that a little bit. So if you go inside File Assets, you can see this is the model which you just imported. So I'm just gonna select that maybe minus 90 nope minus 90 yes this looks kind of okay let me make the scale as 0.7 now if you do playback you can see the model is sticking to the track also we can assure that the track is working properly there is also one quick way to snap your 3d model into one of these feature points select the 3d model click on snap to and select the point where you want to place the mesh in my case let's select this point now you can see the mesh automatically got snapped into that point it's pretty awesome if you want to snap into a point something very far you can do that as well i have selected my mesh let's click on snap to let's click on this point play you can see it's doing a pretty good job yeah this is all about camera 3d solve
now the next step is how to export that into a different software now the exporting option has a new look and view and it's quite organized as well so let me click on export camera data as we click this option inside the camera sol there is already a filter applied these all are the options which you can export in most cases we always export as alembic so just select alembic 3d data there are a few options here but the most used are selected all visible all objects most probably you will be selecting all objects rest of the options i don't touch that often so explore this on your own pace so everything looks okay to me you can simply click on save and and save your entire camera data as alembic file and use that in any other applications so hopefully this tutorial helped you in understanding how mocha camera solve works and what all are the different properties how we can get a decent track what are some of the ways which we can use to fine tune this track how do we import mesh also how we can export the camera data into other applications as well